Blink and you'll miss us. We're back for game four here between Maryville University and Disguised. DSG find themselves up 2-1 in the series, but Maryville strike back in that game three and prevent the sweep, keeping their playoff dreams alive. And Josh, we had talked about it before, but I want to reiterate the fact we had both favored Maryville more in a fearless draft best of five because of how deep the champ pools are. DSG, we, although we've seen them scale throughout the split, Maybe a little concerning with the different types of looks we've seen from them because we've already seen some of their best champs come and go. Yeah, and now we are already starting to get to the spot where we start asking, how deep are your pockets? How many different champions do yep. you have coming through? We've already seen some of the difficulties with different teams as they get later and later into these playoffs, especially in these best of fives. You have to start asking, like, what is my 10th best champion, right? This was never yeah. a question I'd ever come up in any playoffs ever. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can only ban traditionally five, and if maybe you ban out five, I have seen games where like 10 80 carries are banned out, but now we could get even more. Let's take a look at the champions that are already off the table for both of these teams from those first three games. Uh, Smolder, importantly, is still available for MU. I think that's a huge advantage to them. DSG still have some other options for Minui in that bot lane, but the Nila did not feel like it. The Varus is still one of the major champions that I still expect to see at some point True. during this best of five, right? Disguise should never let Scary Jerry play the Kalista, but the Varus is something where we know Minui can play it. And with Disguise being on the blue side in her upcoming game, that could be one of the difference makers. But we still haven't had, you know, our, any of our other things. Our cookies, our churros, and our pretzels have still not come to fruition. <laughs> Where's the Pantheon, Niles? Let's take a look as we're ready for pick and ban here for game four. I still feel like that's something that they could lean onto, but I love this. This is my first time seeing this many shadow banned champions for the teams. Best of five really does add an extra layer on top of the layer that best of three fearless draft had uh, presented for our teams. Yeah, and I'm actually really curious right now what Perry kind of digs into from this position, right? The Xin Zhao is off yeah. the table, the Vi is off the table, the Wukong is off the table. His next most played Volibear? after that is Poppy. He has only played one game of Volibear so far this summer, so it is something that could come through. Uh, this is still 14.5, so yeah, Volibear is still mm -hmm. strong on this patch, but it is a very Telegraph style of engage. But Perry it was known for this. If we go even back to like 2022, 2023, it's one of the champions I associate with Perry. So I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if he leans on that. But you're right, Poppy yep. is one of those other ones. So far, that has not been the focus of MU. They're taking away the Karma. They're taking away the Gragas. Gragas has been very important for tenacity in a lot of the wins that DSG has picked up. So I think that that's a pretty smart ban. Yeah. I also have to note that because Disguised have already had their Orianna game. They're going to have to be banning it for the rest of the series. Yeah. But now Maryville is asking, do we ban the Varus? Do we allow Minui to play this champion? It's incredibly versatile. Mm -hmm. And they say, nope, not going to be letting that one through. So it's already looking like a position where Disguise have some tools. The Talia has been one of the stronger mid lanes. And with a lot of the major counters already effectively banned, it's harder and harder to bring it up. And so the answer yeah. for Maryville... The Aatrox, one of Niall's better champions, as well as the Lucian, which was something that Scary Jerry and Psycho played a lot of earlier on in the season. Yeah, they were uh, heavy proponents for the Lucian plus the Melio or even the Nami. We've seen both combos with the Lucian picked up here, but now it's Minui's time to pull up the Zeri, and Poom is on Lulu duty. Yeah, and we have seen, especially in the uh, Lucian Nami versus Zeri Lulu, we've seen this matchup so many times over the course of 2023, mm -hmm. and it was pretty firmly shown that Zeri Lulu can, in fact, win during Lucian Nami's power spikes. And so I'm a little bit surprised yep. that Maryville are still opting into that. It says that they are very confident in their bot lane's ability to perform, whereas Disguised, they have a fantastic way to play these longer fights. The one question will be, can they ever kill Aatrox through the Sundered Sky plus his ultimate? Yeah, Aatrox can be a problem if you don't have Grievous Wounds, or even if you do. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't even matter uh, if he's far enough into the game. Important to note to Leo, we don't know exactly where she's going yet. Could be jungle, could be mid still, depending on what Perry and Young want to do. But we do know MU have the same idea that we did. Ban away Perry's jungle picks. Volibear and Poppy are taken yeah. off the table. It says to me that they are most likely to go for either the Sejuani or the Trendle next. There's some things that uh, yeah. Parry still has left to play, but they're also taking away... I I love the difference between the champion pools between these two junglers, right? The Volibear and the Poppy banned away from Parry, and then the Vi and the Lee Sin banned away from Disguise. But we also have the Hui coming through for Spyrax.
Yeah, we're going to wait for Yuji's pick till the very end. Kindred's still available, important to note. So maybe Yuji would lean into something like that, but I think you're right on the dot here with what Perry has left in the champ pool. A lot of junglers banned. So the Sejuani hovered, or do we get a carry from Perry? There it is. Viego locked it. Now we know Perry played a lot of Viego in 2023, but this is actually his first time playing it in 2024, surprisingly Ooh. enough. So we have a lot of relatively squishy members coming through for Disguised, and oh my gosh. Please, please, that one too. These are both such good characters into the Aatrox. Something that would be even more... No way! Rek'Sai! <laughs> so I know that there were Rek'Sai changes on this patch. Yep. I will out myself saying I never read them. Hopefully you have, are... because we're going to need one of us to explain what's going on with this. And is it going top lane? I think it might be, right? This is one of the things that we have constantly had lurking in the background in solo queue for years. Okay. Rex Light up in the top lane is very, very playable, especially if you are able to stat check your opponents. But one of the big things about this, as a kid, cool, Kindred is being played by Yuji, is that yep. this Rex Light has so many tools to just go in and burst down a single target. You can stat check almost everybody in the game because of how good your base abilities are. But. Mm. The last patch really hurt her ability to do all that damage, and she's so much more sustained now than she used to, and it creates a situation where Tenacity can actually outlast Niles in the top lane. That is a feat to do for any champion against Aatrox, of all things. So we'll keep our eyes on Tenacity in this 1v1. Has he been practicing it? And what have they been feeding him? Because Tenacity really has shown up bigger in this series than we've seen throughout a lot of the split. There were a couple instances where Tenacity had crazy carry performances, but in this best of five and in playoffs in general, he's also really stepped up to the plate. Tenacity in playoffs seems like a different beast and a reawakened player for DSG. Now in a very unique pick as well. It's crazy when, you know, all these bans for junglers coming out, and we still had two junglers somehow locked in for yeah. DSG going into what could be their last game in this series. If they win this, they get a rematch against TLC for a chance to go to the grand finals back to back for Young. I'm sure Young wants that. I'm sure everybody at DSG wants that as we are loaded in to game number four. Now, I'm doing some quick research here on the Rek'Sai top play, because I will admit, even though okay. I know it exists, I haven't seen it very often. Now, what I am seeing is that most of the time you see it build a more tanky style, right? The start with the Sunfire Rush, and then you have some options as to what else that you can build, and you really are so focused on stat checking your opponents. You still have a very similar set of uh, tools that you start with, right? You still put a point into the W first, and then you start maxing the Q. So, we'll see what happens. I love how you're breaking down the top lane matchup. Oh, yeah. yeah well, Tenacity yeah. Niles still dancing off. And that was a dance battle right there. Rek'Sai's got some proper dance animations. Minions have spawned. And there's still going to call out Yone anything. on that one. That one was, I mean, it was cool, but it wasn't a dance, man. I guess that's fair. I like the double ward saying, Haha, you can kill one, but you won't kill two. <laughs> Here's the trap. Got him. Ooh, Poom missed the initial gl Glitter Lance, it looks like, as the slow didn't go through, but they still got the auto attacks on the Zyko and onto Spyrax. And it's way too late to go for a back. Flash away from Spyrax. He's going to need their back and then teleport to lane. Really rough start for Maryville. Yeah, and it's still a lot of damage down onto Zyko as well, and also the Summoner Spell coming through. They get the ward. So this is a really good start for Disguise on the bottom side of the map, and they're instantly going to trade. That Glitter Lance landed, slow onto Zyko, still has the Flash available. The heal used offensively from Poom, that's Flash out from Nami now. Maryville University are just hard losing the 2v2 matchup down here. Scary Jerry, very low as well. It is Barrier used by Minui, so Summoner trade up, I suppose, for Maryville, if you consider Scary Jerry's being more important than Zyko's. But still, that is a lot of pressure coming through from the disguised bottom side of the map. We were saying that this is a matchup that we have proven over the past year is a good matchup for the Zeri and the Lulu. They hit level two as well. They have control of the bottom side of the map. And as you look towards the rest of it, you're seeing that Spyrax never had a chance to back away. He still has no flash. And even though he's doing a good job so far in surviving, you don't just want to be surviving as Spyrax, the second all pro player, that we have in this team. Yeah, you're expected 
They have a little bit higher bar of execution. Same with bot lane too. Scary Jerry Zyko continually getting punished down here. And what a turnaround for the story of Manui Poom. They showed up into this series with a fervor. I, got, I feel like they got something to prove based on what we were saying about them in the regular season. Because this version of Manui and Poom is so entertaining to watch. They are taking fights. They are playing with confidence. Yeah, and we know that Minui in particular was talking a lot about trying to find his individual plays for himself. He talked about it in the last time we had an interview with him. Okay, look at this, how much tenacity will actually heal, right? That's over 100 wow. HP at level 3. That is like 15% of his HP bar that he just got back after every single trade, so he can just go in and outlast people. But now, boom, Ooh. try to find Yuji. That's a slow, that's a flash stun from Perry. Yuji in a lot of trouble, saving his flash to the very last second. Red buff slow coming through. Glitter lands from Puma is not going to be enough. That is flash from Yuji, though. Scary Jerry 1v1 in Minui and losing that one. Zyko trying to get back under the turret, and Maryville just have nothing to play around. Seismic shove onto Spyrex, does not this have flash. the flash. Young can get this kill. One more threaded volley. Oh, wow. the minions make it in time. Spyrex cannot die. Will get back to the turret. And that's honestly really unlucky for a disguise that none of those tries found any advantage. Yes, they're going to force an early back, but they don't get any of these kills. But they force out a lot of members from the side of Maryville, and that gives them all these small advantages. And Yuji still not able to find... I'm sure he doesn't have his first mark yet, right? Because this should be the first one that spawned. Perry is going to be the one to pick that one up. Yeah, Perry putting UG behind, but I will say all props to Spyrax surviving there. Yep, zero stacks on the Kindred. But not only surviving that uh, 1v1 attempt from Young, but being down flash, being that low in health bar, and still even in CS. Got to give props where it's due. Seems to be the rock for Maryland right now because everything else is struggling. Topside's nasty, has a big push. Two waves in advantage over Niles here he's even going to pick up more, and bot lane is just falling apart for Scary Jerry and Zyko. Yeah, that's really tough. This was a major part of the win for Disguise last time they actually played in playoffs, as Minui and Poom were not just win or not just living, but they were finding 2v2 kills going into Scary Jerry and Zyko, and now they're up already two waves of farm, and there's no extra minions here for Scary Jerry and Zyko to even pick up. It is a fantastic early start, and now the Grub's going to start going Ooh. over to Disguise. Tenacity with a burrow, a lot of damage onto Niles, and Niles is just not ready for this one. Tenacity feels so much more comfortable in the matchup, dodging the sweet spots, getting his own damage through, and buying Parry that priority to go for the triple grub take. No dragon started up by MU on the other side, but the jumping out of Poom doesn't have the backup of Minui, but isn't gonna matter too much. He will just get back to the safety of his side of the jungle and go for a reset. And still, remember how we were talking about how strong Maryville's lanes were? Look at what's happening currently. Because Firex got put behind, he's going to be technically behind in the mid lane, right? Because Tenacity is bodying Niles up in the top side, they have a lead there in a matchup that it does not look like Niles is particularly comfortable in. And then in the bottom side, Manui and Poom, because they took the fight to Scary Jerry and Psycho right at the beginning of the game, are also up a wave and a half. This is an entirely different version of this matchup than we're used to seeing. And so now Maryville, the leads that they're used to getting, it's going to have to come from some plays rather than just passively being better than their opponents. And some questions around Maryville going into the split was around Niles in the top lane. We actually got a chance to chat with him in an interview after their last series win. And he said it himself. He's like, look, I tell the guys all the time, because he's also coaching the team, by the way. He's a player coach for them. He said, I'm the worst player on this team, guys. You know, I'm just going to try and hold it down up here and allow you all to pop off. Niles uh, has had his moment. He has played in the LCS in the past, but we have expectation that a player like Tenacity should be able to do this. The question was, can he do this? And so far, that has been answered with a resounding yes. Tenacity has been getting the better of Niles in this top lane throughout the series. Yeah. And I, I think it is worth noting at this point that most of the players on both these squads are still trying to play LCS again as Yuji, or... Yuji jumps in onto Perry, has the backup of Niles and Spyrax here. Young trying to get away, flashes to safety. DSG now have battle lines drawn. Tenacity on the front line, flashes forward for a triple knockup on Burrow. Now damage onto Yuji, no ultimate for the Kindred, but Niles is straight back onto Tenacity. Should be able to have him one sweet spot, doesn't hit the second one. 
but the third one is there. First blood to Niles. Maryville University might get out of this one too. Go to volley damage. He flashes away, gets out from the heartbreaker. Now comes oh. the Weaver's Wall. Young trying to get in there. They're dodging it though. The body blocking from Yuji, and he'll take down another. They save the top laner and Maryville University make a miracle fight work in the river. And they needed that so bad. They needed that more than anything else they could have gotten here. The fact that this top side wins out on that skirmish really undoes a lot of the lead that Disguised was already starting to build up. And I can't wait to go back over it because the way yeah. that they try and find Niles throughout this fight and just barely aren't able to speaks to how much experience this guy really has. But why? Watch during this. Perry starts his fight off at level 5 as they start fighting for the Scuttle Crab. And he ends up picking up the Scuttle Crab later on in the fight in order to level up to 6. But Niles taking a ton of damage throughout this entire thing does end up meaning that he suddenly becomes a target. As Perry gets the smite off, suddenly Niles yep. gets very, very low. But he flashes out of the ultimate, the heartbreaker, heartbreaking here for Perry. And then as they try to force the issue, Young oh. has to shoot his threaded volley directly into Yuji, saving Niles at less than 100 HP. It looked so good for DSG from my perspective as soon as Perry hits level six. But that flash from Niles gets him away and the threaded volley missing. That could have been a very different play if anything had gone differently there for Maryville University. But now they find themselves two kills in the lead, still even gold, so job's not done. But that's massive, especially for Niles to pick up that first blood because the gold was getting really rough from CS, but now he's actually ahead of tenacity. True. And that is huge considering how badly this lane was going for such a long time. And now, these guys, they aren't necessarily worried about how this game state is going because Yuji, I can't imagine he's at more than two stacks at this point, but also they have really strong scaling tools across the side of Disguise. They still have the Zeri, they still have the Viego, and we're learning that Yuji still has zero wow. stacks on this Kindred even after that last girl. Ooh. That is still rough. Or the Kindred player. I had a chat with Chad about the kind of uh, average stacking of Kindred. You're not necessarily expected to get to four stacks that quickly, but you know, around, I, I don't want to misquote him, but I want to say it was around, you know, 15 minute mark is when you should on average expect to get that one, depending on how bloody the game has been and how your lanes are able to play for you. But well, UG's definitely going to be behind that curve <laughs> as he has not yet picked up the first. Yeah, and we also have a Grub again coming through as Perry absolutely having more control of the jungle so far this game. And now, looking for Spyrex. Ooh, good damage on the Young from Spyrex on the 1v1, and Perry's not there fast enough. Ooh, Young taking a lot of damage. On the tail end right there. Barely a live lightning crash though from Manui. They're taking the 2v2 in the bot lane. Coling used by Scary Jerry to keep Manui back. I think all shots from that one must have landed between Poom, Manui, and the Wave. So well done for Maryville to hold the line bot lane. Also, shout out to Spyrex for taking control of this mid lane as now Yuji comes down towards the bottom side. Spotted, spotted out. Spotted on the control ward. Poom and Manui know this is happening. They still have wild growth from Poom. Still have barrier for Manui. This would be a very tough dive. And Maryville call it off. Makes sense. Still, this game... Very, very even so far because of a fantastic skirmish from the top side of Maryville. This is how they used to win the few games that they won in 2023, but has not been their typical recipe for success here in 2024. And now, these guys are kind of reeling, despite how effectively they were able to shut down Yuji's stack growth so far. He is now starting to take away his opponent's jungle, but still yet to find the first stack. And Yuji's only 65 farm even at that. So behind in stacking, behind in clear, has a kill, and that's keeping them competitive, but DSG still feel like they're in a very positive oh, spot. Yeah. If they lose Young, though, that's rough. Has Flash available. Firex is there. That's Flash out from Young, and the Seismic Shove might just keep him alive. Yuji can't continue the chase. Young survives. That should be a dragon though, right? Because Maryville have so much control yeah. of this side of the map and Young having already used a teleport. Honestly, I, I have to say that was a really greedy flash coming up from Young, waiting as long as he did. He needed to flash as soon as he saw Yuji come out of that brush and he might have been able to stay on the map, stay in the mid lane and at least get some of the experience he's going to be losing. As Weaver's Wall, though, and the team's actually been able to hold the line, because Perry, with the priority from bot lane, walked up into the bottom river, pushed Maryville away. 
So there's a chance here that Young can actually get in range faster than Spyrax. He's currently on the midway, pulling used by Scary Jerry. That's fine. Poom doesn't need to have a health bar. He just needs to buff oh. up Minui. Buff up Parry. Lightning Crash goes down. A lot of damage. Heartbreaker dodged by Zyko, but he still falls. Oh, he Young dies. picks up the kill. The Weaver's Wall gets him in range, and DSG were ready for the fight. Maryville were not. I thought for sure that ultimate was in time, but no, Zyko still dies right at the end of that, and that means that there is no opportunity for Maryville to fight back. The dragon that we thought was surely going to go to Maryville is now picked up by Disguise. The Spyrex being a little cheeky. As Spiral in Despair won't throw it out onto Parry right now. They're going to hold the cooldown. Yeah, Another being round. very cheeky right now. He's in a 1v2, no backup, but she just feels confident enough thinking, uh, bet they won't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, that's definitely one of those spots. I love the, you won't. You don't believe in this, as now, yeah. Manui. If I play with blind confidence, they're going to believe Yuji's behind me. True. I, I always love that kind of bluff that you can get, but we get another look at this as this guy's this is mostly a play that starts off from Perry saying, these guys are a little bit too far forward, and as long as I can play around this edge of the vision, I have access to the flash plus the stun. They find their way onto Zyko, and here we get to see how close this Lambs fight is. Ah, just moments too late to come out to try and save Zyko's life, and that is enough to find themselves the dragon. Very, very close series of events right there. But as we're back to live, that's two dragons to DSG. They continue the stacking towards Mountain Soul. Very hard for a Lucian in particular to play into that one. You're not going to be packing as much pure DPS. You kind of want to get that big pulling burst and that extra resistance and shield will help keep, keep DSG alive. As they're also onto this Rift Herald. So all objective control so far to DSG. They got all six grubs as well. Harry has been putting on a masterclass of jungling in this matchup. Yeah, he's had so much control, and I, I've been coming back to this because it's been one of my favorite quotes that I've heard. One of the best ways to determine how strong a jungler is, especially when you play against them, is it feels like they are a wall. Everything that you try and do just is not enough. They're always there to stop your plays. They're always faster than you to anywhere you want to be on the map. Perry's done a fantastic job of that so far this game. He has consistently gotten all of the neutral camps. He's been consistently able to stop any plays from Yuji. And of course, without that one topside skirmish that didn't go their way, this guy would have had a dominating lead in this game. And now Zyko needs to be careful. Oh, Zyko caught out of position. Doesn't have the flash available. Heartbreaker and reset for Perry. Yuji gets back over the wall, though. So I think it's only going to be the one. Mary will lose their support and not much else. And yeah, everybody goes back to business as usual, but the Zyko Nami is starting to fall prey very consistently to the members of Disguise. It's nasty. I mean, we get to see, like, this, you know, kind of is a uh, nothing barrel up in the top side. They will both yep. heal up after all of that, but there's a lot of pressure in the mid lane, too. Stride Breaker and the Bramble Vest for Tenacity, but he's still losing the 1v1 right now. Niles hasn't even popped the World Ender. And winning that one, Colin comes through, a lot of damage out of Manui. He will live, but Scary Jerry has Flash. How bad does he want it? Not bad Not enough. enough. Manui will be walking away and Perry right around the corners, looking for something potentially, but it is still a position where Disguised, they should feel like they are in control of this game. As long as they're not losing, they are winning, and that does mean that Disguised, with this play coming through, it is going to be on Manui later on in the game. He did a fantastic job in his other scaling game when he was playing on the Smolter, but I do have a feeling that Spyrex, seems to be uh, a little bit upset at how some of our previous games have gone because he is absolutely taking control saying hey you took all of my hp Ooh. at the beginning you got my flash at level one it doesn't matter i'm back in the lead he just completely chunks out young as soon as he gets into that lane too and he's gonna have to go for another reset here probably just give up that bottom turret at that point if spyrex wants to push it in no actually goes for the teleport okay we'll keep it alive here as yuji's hovering top side tenacity and niles are duking it out to start but tenacity gets out of there with an umbra and is fine. Here comes Pooh. Oh, where? Oh, the threat of volley went the wrong way. Close. Very close. DSG tried to close the trap, but they don't quite get Spyrex. Don't know if Spyrex even knew, but at this point, they definitely know that he was at a bit more risk. And with 50 seconds left until the next dragon, this is a big opportunity, right? We were looking at how effectively uh, Disguise could play around the dragons when they had the smolder. This time they got to do it with the Zeri, who wow. does have the first item completed. 
And look I guess at that. this is well past plates being down, so that extra armor is gone, but I think Tenazzi just hunted to zero that turret. I don't remember any substantial damage being on that earlier. It was very close, Ooh. yeah. I mean, the Gromageddon coming through as well, doing a True. lot of extra damage there. The Demolish helps at the same time in disguise. They've been sitting right in this part of the map for a long time. They're just waiting. The Death Brush has been set. DSG send out the bait. It's Minui. Mm. Will that bubble? MU bite the hook? Yeah, Tenacity that's... is here as well. They see Tenacity on the flank. So MU actually positioned on the Tenacity side of the fight, trying to chunk down the Rek side, but he is quite tanky. They don't do that much damage to him as of now. And they also lose control of the midway push. The Herald will get the charge off. That's enough to clear the entire turret, so MU are going to have to fight into the river now for this dragon. Look at where Young and Tenacity are positioned. They're making sure that it's tough for Maryville to walk on in, but the Got Seismic it. Shove doesn't catch anybody. But as you said, it is too late. The Skies, though, are pushed towards the bottom side of the map, and Maryville are going to try and answer at the mid lane turret. Yeah, they will also have a uh, Kindred stack in the top river. So Yuji can go for that one as well. I don't even know if he's got Hang's one first. Yet. We'll see. They're on the turret right now. And they will claim that one. Okay, so Mary will get something for it, but they, they kind of lost their position around the dragon, which made things really awkward for them. And now they have to worry about dragon soul for DSG in four and a half minutes. And as this turret goes down for Young at the same time, it does feel as though disguised. Again, they have not really played any of these games with a lead early on. The first game was, you know, back and forth. The game remained very close, but this is the first time I feel like we can really say Disguised are coming out of the early mid game in control. They yeah. played the Smolder game. That was absolutely uh, one where they just needed to buy time. Last game, game three, they just got blasted. And game one was back and forth, constantly being contested. And Yuji... A jungler we have been lauding throughout the entire split, put completely on the back foot, got his first Kindred stack at about 1845 in that top river. Has not been able to make the Kindred work so far. Not necessarily all because of his own play. I mean, the, the map state has been difficult for the Kindred to play around, but still we have a certain level of expectation for Maryville based on how they were able to perform in the regular season. A lot of individual members that we've been very impressed with Having rough showings right now. Oh. Here we go, Perry. Having a pickoff moment onto Spyrax. Heartbreaker not going far enough, so I want to spare. We'll just trade some damage back. Still, it is a flash, but overall, I do have to say, right? We've already talked about it a little bit. We know that Cubby voted for uh, Surti as his most valuable prospect. I've said this as well. UT was my vote. He hasn't. We haven't necessarily seen what the most valuable prospects have actually been, but we know that there are a lot of people on both of these squads who were at least in consideration. And it's worth noting that there was a lot more community votes, right? Even with like things like the All Pro, sure. the community, or the rather the co-streamers, the players, and the teams all had opportunities to vote on this as well. And Niles was number three. Yeah, was number that two. Nod for All Pro, I think, was. Deserved to an extent, but also th there were still questions around it based on how Maryville had been picking up their wins, right? Yeah. I was surprised, for sure. I, I think Niles was probably surprised as well. But <laughs> either way, it is still an opportunity now for some of these players, right? We've already revealed that Niles and Spyrax are in the, you know, the number three and the number two all-pro teams. Now we're going to be looking to see if they can continue making these plays deserve that spot because they are on the cusp of potentially dropping. There's a Dragon Soul spawning in two minutes for Disguised, and it feels as though Disguised is just slowly taking control. Look at how much more vision Disguised has been able to put in the Eastern Quadrant as mm -hmm. compared to what Maryville have been able to do. And on the topic as well as continuing uh, to set up for this dragon. It's going to be a bit of time so we can catch our breath here. Uh, if you've noticed, nobody from DSG has actually had a member present in the All-Pros for third or second yet. So, uh, reminder, it's a regular season award that we give out. It's the first time doing that, but it just shows how much better DSG have looked in playoffs than in the regular season. They have scaled. I don't know what they're feeding them over there, uh, maybe it's the fact that this guy is currently co-streaming right now. He cursed them in that second or that that uh, third game, but uh, <laughs> this one maybe it's working out for them. Maybe it's you. But maybe it's me. I have casted a weird amount of DSG games. Yeah, I will say. and a weird amount of DSG losses as well. You know, I have to imagine <laughs> that this guy does not have a great relationship with you at this point. 
Yeah, I don't toast. Sorry, man. I it, I swear I'm not trying to do it. Uh, hey, I did cast their last upset against Mu, but you know true. what? Let's refocus up here. So did it's I. A minute until the dragon. And that means that we have to start focusing on how the teams are setting up. The Weaver's Wall comes in from Young. Not going to catch anybody out. We'll just get him into the area to establish control, Ooh, maintain control of the mid wave push. The poke is a lot coming through onto Maryville as well, and now this becomes one of the spots. Now, Maryville have been very good at setting up unusual battle lines and fighting these flanks, but they have not had the time to move in, and now they have to force their way through into a Talia and a Viego. That's a tough combination, and Niles has already been marked. Yeah, cannot find the flank he's looking for. Maryville are just going to have to Ooh, force their way in. Now teleport coming in from Tenacity. Flanking Rek'Sai while Young keeps poking. Big calling damage. He flashes early. Oh. Now stun on a scary oh. Jerry. He saw the angle to get damage in and gets punished for it. Resets for Perry. Means Viego can pop off. Heartbreaker forward. He's knocked up by the bubble. A lot of damage. Perry's down. Got him. Yuji claims the kill, but now Niles says tag me in. Again, front line. Try and stop Tenacity from getting further forward. Tenacity retreating back. Manui was untouched. Now gets knocked up Niles? by Niles. The Aatrox. He does. It. Shut down for Niles on a Manui. The AD carry is down. Maryville can make this work. Maul onto Young, but Tenacity pushes away Spyrex and Zyko. Only two members left for Maryville. If Niles lives there, that could have been exactly what Maryville needed, but DSG just barely hold the line. It looks like one of the top candidates for the most improved ends up giving it to our third off-road stop laner, who very, very nearly saves the game. But Scary Cherry thinks he sees an angle, and Perry says, absolutely not. Takes him down almost instantly, but then disguised very much looking to see if they can find even more than that, but these battle lines are so confused, they aren't able to bring people around the terrain, but crucially, Yuji dies before the ultimate goes off, and that buys enough time. But, oh my gosh, it looks like they might have actually we're saved the game. The Maryville weren't able to get it, or rather DSG were not able to get it after that one, and there we go, Scary Cherry of all people is the one to pick it up. Maryville have stopped the stacking of DSG. I wonder what was happening during the replay, it felt like DSG should have been able to just get it. Yeah, I, there's just enough pressure coming out from the surviving members of Maryville. Teleports coming through from Niles and Spyrax, able to buy enough time. Yeah. But Thank disguised. you, for letting us know. It looks like Spyrax was the one that teleported in to stop it. They're just starting this. Okay, bold move from DSG. It's unspotted so far. The turn is tough. Cassidy can tank it up. They have the Lulu shields as well, and DPS coming in from Anui, but they're not even halfway there. Maryville now know that this is happening. They can try and approach. Niles is trying to flank around to prevent an escape path, but ESG hold the line. Oh, and Perry. Now, ooh, Perry. That was a bold move right there. Gets feared up by Spyrex. Tolling comes through. What a oh. Nami ultimate on to everybody. Niles takes out Perry. Yuji shuts down Young. And Maryville University make it work. And now they're going to look at Baron. And this is such a huge opportunity. Maryville not going quietly into the good night. Niles once again stepping up in another fight. And Maryville, they're either the ones rewarded with a rally cry of Baron buff. 25 minutes into the game. They're not out of the woods yet, Kangas. But this is what they need to do. They have found the path in order to find another win. Perry had such a good early game, but as we get a look at the replay, he's way too far forward from the rest of the team. This has never been a problem for Perry before this playoffs. We've had to look at him. We have to criticize that this is the third or fourth time in games where Disguise have been ahead, where he's made plays just like that in order to find himself on the wrong side of a wall, on the wrong side of a fight. We saw it happen at this blue buff. He went too far to try and pick up Spyrex. And that has to be confidence shattering. Every single time yeah. something like that happens, you lose a little bit of your confidence and your ability to make decisions. And now Maryville, with their first lead so far here in game four, are looking to try and take us to a fifth one. <laughs> I, I hate to do it. Yuji's only at two stacks right now. He's still making it work on the Kindred He's regardless. Out. Might hit three items before four stacks. Uh, that's a rough early game, but bringing it back regardless. Maryville University, they got that fight, and then they got that dog in them. And they are not going to give DSG an easy series. They're going to make them work for every inch that DSG wants to take. But right now, it's Maryville taking the field. They got the Baron buff. They're pushing into these turrets. Started the siege onto the second tier one in the bottom lane, but decided to back off. They want to go for the resets. 
Buy the gold in the pocket instead. Yeah, you're already seeing the ping start the top side of the map as well. It is worth noting that during that tenacity was able to take the second tier top lane tier. And again, I say this all the time, you got two kills worth of gold off of that at the same time. Maryville, they're picking up a lot of standing gold that was still available to them on the map. But the play that still matters, oh no. Barry yet again, he has Heartbreaker, okay. he has Flash, he has a Heartbreaker away. Hey, we'll be back up before the dragon fight, so it's not that big of a cooldown, all things considered. I think that's fine. Yeah, I just, I've gotten so many flashbacks, it just would not have been the first time, but Disguise knows that the real fight happens around the Mountain Dragon I, Soul. I give this turret, honestly, I don't care. I think DSG, they're, they're fighting for the turret right now, they don't need to. Sharks are circling, they don't have Heartbreaker cooldown available anymore, but they do get the wave. They won't die yet, but this next shove should take it in. DSG still look like they're going to try and contest this. They don't need to prevent the turret from falling, they just need to make it fall slowly, right? You're buying time for the Baron to sure. fall off, and the Skies, to their credit, are able to defend it. Meyer, Maryville not willing to commit for that. I think part of that is the fact that Spyrax is still finding advantage on the bottom side. Here comes the teleport. Oh, we're going for Spyrax. Tenacity teleporting down well. there. Spyrax out of position, he has the teleport available. But it's got to be a teleport from Niles to try and back up the mid laner. Good fear lands. Actually, it's just the ultimate onto Young. Tenacity is still chasing it down. Tenacity, can you do it in the 1v2? He doesn't have the damage, though. He's got a big health bar, but Niles is a big enough bodyguard, even with Poom here. Now they got a Shirelius. Get out of there. Maryville, it bought enough time for everybody to come down. <laughs> I mean, they, they rang the alarm, and the entire team said, we will save you, Spyrax. And they do just that. And everybody who got chunked out is going to be able to come right on back. Both Young and Spyrax going low. They will have teleports to be back on the map. Tenacity a little bit slow to get back out here. But now Perry has to make sure that they can get the mid lane pushing. They this need is... to make sure that they yeah. are safe. Once again, a do or die moment from both uh -oh. of these rosters. T Tenacity went the wrong way. Tenacity doesn't have teleport and he was passing topside. So he's going to be very late to this setup. Dragon just spawned. Maryville have control over the river. The issue are going to have to just brute force their way in. Weaver's Buying ball time. used. Tries to buy some time. Tenacity has arrived now. Perry trying to get into the pit. And Maryville keeps them out. Battle lines have been drawn. Maryville holding the dragon for now. DSG, they need Tenacity to be their frontliner. They're waiting for the ultimate cooldown to come back up. You have to imagine. As the Zeri damage is so scary to think about. It's scary. Jerry throws out the colon. Good damage on too young. Gets flashed out of the Talia. Maryville. It's a pivotal moment. If they can get this dragon, deny the soul, they can keep the game going for a little longer. But DSG won it. Manui with the lightning crash they will go Perry. in. Niles takes out Perry. The jungler just gets popped for DSG. And that allows Maryville to run loose in the fight. Taking down two members. DSG are going to want that one back. Niles is buying so much space. This is one of the best games from him we've seen in so long. Winning the topside skirmish, saving the game around the last dragon soul finding the opportunity to push everyone back and catching Perry for this one as well. Maryville are poised to take us to game five. There's still 15 seconds on Perry, 20 seconds on Young. How much more can MU get done? Yuji's taking away the jungle camps, which makes me think it's just going to be the inhibitor and then backing off. But still, Maryville deny the soul two times in a row. They win back-to-back -back team fights. Can they get out now? Manui's jumping forward, doesn't have the ultimate available this oh. time around, and almost just gets popped. This Zeri's having a really rough time on putting damage in these fights. Let's get another look at that. How does Perry go down here? Yeah, I mean, we get to see Niles create so much space in this last fight, and slowly, 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 finally they say the dragon is low enough. We need to push forward. We need to push people away. And then, watch how Niles just goes in. He just catches Perry the first time, and then he hits him a second time, wow. and everything lands onto him all at once. And Niles has taken absolutely no damage, and Disguise is running for the hills. Yeah, that was, I'd say, all Spyrax all day. They just lost track of the Hui, and the Hui was able to get the Maws onto Perry. All that damage from range. Without Perry there, that means Dragon over. MU now with a commanding position on the Rift. 4.4 thousand gold lead on the verge of starting the reverse sweep. They got the first game. This would be the second, tying the series up. Momentum halted for DSG and gained for MU. It could come down to this Baron fight. And this guy, is, they, they just are not setting up for these objectives properly at all. Look at how much space Maryville can take. 
Gary Jerry's trying to get all that damage from the Colleen in. Niles on the front line here. We've seen what he's been able to do. Nobody can step up oh. to Niles. Perry flashes forward and misses the stun. He just gets popped again. Yuji on the revenge tour against the enemy jungler. DSG trying to stay alive against Niles, but there's just no hope. Maryville University will make it work. Finally, the Lambs of Spike comes down, but it's not enough. There we go, Maryville University. They do get the sweep. They don't lose a single member for the fight, and they keep their playoff dreams alive. We're going to game five. The tenacity and the resilience coming through from Maryville is incredible. This was one of the first times they did not have an advantage early on, and then the captain, Niles, he says he's coming through. He's not necessarily going to be the star of the show, but he was the star of this game, and it is fantastic. Maryville, every single player is running on all cylinders, and they need that as they are pushing themselves to a fifth game. Nobody's going to be able to play anything. Yeah, we actually have a replay because we got to take another look at that one. Shout out to Yuji, by the way, got to the four kindred stacks at the very end of the game. But watch how desperate DSG was and watch how Maryville approach. Yeah, this turn is so hard from Disguise and they give up so much space. Oh, but Perry oh. flashes and does not land the stun. That is their only real engage tool. Tenacity tries to run in by himself, but you can see the damage that goes into Niles is just not there. He heals for his entire health bar every time he throws that inability. It is absolute dominance coming through from Disguise and it was a clean ace at the end. What a performance from Maryville University. What a demonstration of the grit of these players. Not only are they competing in the NACL against players that have played on the LCS stage, but they're also attending college at the same time. And it makes you wonder, imagine a world where they just play League of Legends. Well, we're going to send it to a short break before we get back for game five and determine who's taking the series and continuing on in playoffs right after this.
Oh.